Hello and welcome back to my channel. In the first episode, we turned this seven-year-old Dell Octiplex into a slightly faster one. It worked really, really well. I produced a couple of videos on this and it was much faster than my laptop. Therefore, the result was positive. The only thing is, the case, it hasn't aged well. Therefore, I have now bought myself a Corsair case. This should help make the computer look as good as it performs. In this video, we're going to be upgrading the case, obviously. Case fans, CPU cooler. The parts behind me are mostly the same parts which have been taken from the Dell Octiplex. However, I no longer have a GPU. When I first bought the GPU, I bought just a GPU. I've now done some research and according to PewGift Systems, the best GPU for DaVinci Resolve would be a GeForce RTX graphics card. So I've sold the card Learning about case swaps, I found out that Dell have a lot of proprietary connections. I've had to buy these adapters from Harbin Repairs in America. These connect the Corsair case to the Dell motherboard. To get the fans to work, I've had to um, get these adapters. These are 5 pins to 4 pins. My problems didn't stop there either. So I've installed this um, CPU cooler. Here you can see that there's a standoff screw. This isn't the normal size standoff screw. This is the normal size standoff screw. It's half the size of what it needs to be. So the CPU cooler came with these spacers. However, the spacer doesn't come with anything to attach to the backplate. So I've had to find a standoff like this, but you can plug into the plate behind. Just like last time, there has been a smidge of movie magic. I've installed the case fans because that's just boring to watch. I have also added the CPU cooler. This was very hard because of the whole spacer and stuff. There's a lot of adapters out there um, and I've already bought quite a few of them so I'm not a stranger to adapters. However, in the Corsair world it is quite easy just to stay within them. Because I have put this wiring diagram it's going to be a lot easier when it comes to connecting everything together. All right, let's start the build. Start off by adding in these, uh, these small adapters from Harbin Repairs. And the second one goes in just like that. We've got our CPU cooler in. We've ha added in some Noctua thermal paste. We've got the RAM in installed. Let's get the case. There we go. So now we'll just uh, screw the motherboard down. Next up, Wi-Fi card. So Wi-Fi card went in here, I believe, last time. So I'm gonna take off this one. We have to now turn it over and then start managing cables. So unlike the Dell, where we had to hide all of our cables by removing the CD-ROM and then hiding everything in that bracket, this one has a whole area for hiding cables. In the last video, we installed the power supply next. We'll give that a try and see how far it gets. Okay, I've spent some time thinking about how I'm gonna install the PSU. I'm going to put the, the fans uh, facing down so it's sucking cool, fresh air from the base of the computer. So I have this wiring loom here. Um, so let's just follow this. Three, four. Four fans. Okay, I'm definitely missing a couple. This one is one, two, three. Okay, so this one goes in three. So the signal goes from the Commander Pro, um, and then from the LED, it would go into this, and then this would tell each of the fans uh, what colors to, to, to show. Now, I'm not too sure if these really matter, which, uh, which one they go into. I think, we, yeah, yeah. Plug them in. Okay, so that gets rid of all the fans. Now I think it would be helpful if we stand up the PC. I think it would be helpful if we sent through some of the cables and then we connect them up from the back side. So we've got this adapter here, which is one of the five pin to four pin adapters. And then another one, that's much trouble. We've also got a temp cable here. This one is the boot cable. Cool. So we have this fan here, which goes onto the cooler. So this fan was originally a Cooler Master fan, but I took off the brackets and then added on the Corsair fan 
just so that I can keep the uh, the lights consistent. Oh, it's like a minefield, all these cables back here. Okay, so we have power, that's there. But we now need to power the, uh, uh, the CPU. This is there, it has to go through. Okay, so this adapter here is for this fan, and then this adapter is for this fan. Okay. I can then plug those things together. This one is the USB, I believe. So this is audio, so okay, that's quite easy. That one goes into there. Oh, this is horrible. Okay, that wasn't so fun doing that. I felt like I was going to snap the uh, the circuit board. Cool. We have this power switch, which I'm assuming goes on the top, and then power plus and a power minus. I'm going to stick in the power switch one first. We've got a power plus and a power minus. So the minus is on the right hand side. Well, they're not wiggling loose, which means they must be on there. We've got our internal USB here. This is for the Commander Pro. I can see that just here. We've got these two hubs just here with power cables here and here. They both need SASA power, so that's one of them. I believe we're completely done. Um, now just to stuff all of this into the bottom. This is the first turn on of the Dell Optiplex 7020 case swap into a 4000X. No, it's a 4000D. It's working. Here, I'll show you a picture now of what this whole build has been inspired by. This is the computer that I've been aiming towards. So there it is. I'm calling it world's first Dell Optiplex 7020 in case swapped into a Corsair 4000D airflow. This is beautiful. However, I'm not finished yet. I have the LEDs to do still um, on the inside, but there is another world's first. It's I'm not going to tell you just yet. I'll see you later.